So, Radmila, the other day, um, you really got me thinking about this this idea of the journey we take as a grammar teacher. Yes, yes, I would really like to hear what your journey was like. Well, thank you for asking. I, I like to talk about it. Um, as a as a beginning teacher, I was I was in Japan at a small language school, and I, I certainly fell into the trap um, that Michael Swan says of of telling the whole truth. In that, I when I gave a grammar explanation or presentation, I tended to give every single detail from kind of the really useful things down to the very minute, obscure details that probably led to a lot of confusion on my students' part. Um, I would go in and I was kind of mirroring what my textbook did because the textbook, would be, one page would be grammar explanation and another would be maybe some practice items. But I would go through this grammar explanation and I would fill up my whiteboard with explanations and rules and formulas and it would take me most of the class to get through that explanation. Um, I would reach the end of the class time and I would notice that we, we hadn't really done much practice. Um, and then I would be surprised the next class time when the students came in and they had questions about that grammar form and I thought, well, here we go again. And I would start with the same series of explanations. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty typical presentation style. Mm. Um, a lot of teachers I have worked with are, are surprised when students make mistakes um, after the grammar has been explained. Mm. So what happened from there? How did your journey continue? Yeah, well along the way I realized that student learning was not being served by my explanations. Um, so from there, I, I started reading a lot. Mm -hmm. I started reading the likes of uh, Diane Larson Freeman, uh, Michael Swan, we talked about, um, Scott Thornberry. I started taking other courses on, on teaching grammar. And I started experimenting in my classroom with these ideas and then going home and reflecting on how was this change helping my, helping my student learning. And it really led me to see that, that output was where the learning was taking place and that my, these long early um, presentations that I made were not, were not helping them reach where I wanted them to. But allowing the students to wrestle with the language, to make mistakes, to get feedback, that's the place where I wanted my students to be to actually learn. Mm -hmm. and all of these things happened in the presentation stage? Yes, they did. They, yeah. Yeah.